His life worth living for yourself. We live for ourselves. I want to do my thing. This whole city is full of people wanting to do my thing. Well, if your thing isn't God things, you struck out. You can do your thing, but it leaves you empty. It does not fill. It does not satisfy. It does not give life. Now I ask you this. Is life worth living? Now what about life? Most of you know about your own lives. I want to read you some scriptures that I wrote down today about life. The Bible says about how short it is. There is but a step between me and death. 1 Samuel 20 verse 3. Isn't that true? I mean, I've seen people. I've seen two people killed on Sunset Boulevard who stepped out in front of cars. One step between me and death. One heartbeat. The Bible also says he must die as water that is spilt on the ground. It cannot be gathered up. This is the way life is. This like water poured out. The Bible said our days on the earth as are but a shadow with none abiding. A shadow passing by. The Bible says my days are like a weaver's shuttle splashing back and forth. Like a wind, like a cloud, like the vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The Bible says that we are like a flower that bloometh and then we are cut down like the grass. God says that our life is short. Now God made life. God made your life holy and He made it good. But life is all so short. And you know it, don't you? Everybody looks at me and you say, He's older than when I first saw Him. That's right. Because I'm older. I'm 41. Paul thought I was 40. Well, if I live long enough, one day I'll be 80. But you see, my life is moving toward death. And every one of your lives is moving toward death. I don't care how pretty you are, girl. The other night, they had Gazari dancers up here. And every one of them was 18, 19. I mean, they were really, you know, they are really beautiful. But every one of them are going to be old men and old women. Every one of them are going to die. You can go somewhere and you can have your skin cut back. You can have a facelift. You can have every other kind of lift and, and surgery and everything else. But you're still going to die. You're still growing older. And the living know that they shall die. Now some of you that are normally watching television, Christian television, wonder why I'm preaching the way, because I'm preaching to people who are so into themselves, right? We're into ourselves in Hollywood. We're into our looks, into our cool bodies, strong muscles, jogging and lifting weights. That's all right to be in shape. But I tell you, you still die. You still get old. And if God said that's it, your heart burst and you're dead. You have a stroke and you die, Miss Beauty. One day, somebody's going to be feeding you with a straw in an old folks home. Life is short. You don't, many, you don't remember many stars in Hollywood. They come and they go. You hear hit records now and in 10 years, nobody even knows who they were. Life is fast. Fame is short. I know people who've been at the top. Man, they ran a... Rolls Royce, and they ride up over here to the rainbow, and they go over there and have a cool meal, you know, and everybody's out there at 2 or 3 in the morning looking at everybody, and everybody's doing a number on the other one's head, and they all know it's fake. And they all know it's a show. They all know it's a game. And down in the late night, after hours restaurants where you're eating breakfast at 3, 4, and 5 in the morning, that's where the guys and girls are sitting there in despair, got to go home and go to bed by yourself. I hope you play the repeat of this some night at about 2 o'clock for the late night, folks. Because you see, life is fast. If life is worth living, and it's so fast and it's so moving, then what is it worth living for? A third of your life you spend in bed sleeping. 
One third of it. What a waste. Amen. But I don't care how cool you are, you still got to sleep. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cool goes to bed. I mean, he can say, I'm having good times, but you, after a few days of 24 hours a day, you got to crash for a day or two. 30 a time you're going to spend in bed. Spend at least an hour out of those 24 in the restroom. Washing, shaving, putting on makeup, taking it off, everything else. Spend at least one hour, one twenty-fourth of your whole life you spend, you spend in the toilet. You spend at least an average of two hours a day eating, feeding the old body. Can't do anything much worthwhile while you're eating. Two hours, total it all up. You had not got much time to do anything worthwhile. What is your life all about? Some people say, well, if I get some money, I can do it. I need money. So what do you get? A bunch of paper? I've always laughed at all these people who work so hard for a picture of Uncle Sam. <laughs> Just a piece of paper. You could blow your nose on it. You could... Oh, you could paper your wall with it. It's only paper. And I thank God for all the inflation today. It's shaking everybody's money, you know. About to lose it. Is it worth anything? No, it isn't. <laughs> Germany declared all their money null and void. Greece declared all their money null and void. Italy declared all their money null and void. I can tell you country after country at time have said our money's worth nothing. They just did it the other day in, uh, in Libya. Just two weeks ago in Libya, they declared it worthless. And you couldn't draw out but so much. You could get up Monday morning and have nothing. You give your life for money. The Bible said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. For what is your life? What is your life? Is it money? You give your life for fame. What does it have mean to have your name in the neon light? Out here tonight on both sides, this billboard says, Author Bless It. What does that mean? Doesn't mean a thing that doesn't count for Jesus Christ. You can have your name up there, but it's gone and nobody remembers. And the few that remember are going to soon die and they'll forget you anyway. How many people do you remember that's lived over a hundred years? How many names? Do you know of all history, if I gave you a test, had you write down every name you know of somebody that lived over 100 years, you might list 50. You might could think of 100. And how many billion have been born? What does fame mean? Most people's fame is big when they die, isn't it? Headlines, somebody's dead. But they can't read the news. Most of them are in hell. Is life worth living for money? No, and you know it. I know people who've got money and they can't sleep. They've got to look at the stock market every morning. They're paranoid. Just had prayer today with a guy who's got so much money and he's on the phone. Pray. He's about to lose it. People are always that way, aren't they? Whatever you got, when you die, you can't take it with you. You give your life to fame. But I tell you, your name doesn't impress God unless it's a name of repentance. Unless it's in His book. The only place I want my name is in the Lamb's book of life. Right there. The other day I got a letter from a lady and she said, your name has seven letters in it and that's a great sign from God. I wrote her back. I said, no, it has eight. You spelled it wrong. <laughs> but I said, the only place I need it spelled right is in God's book. Author Owen, bless it, with two T's, you know. With him, he knows. His life worth living for yourself. We live for ourselves. I want to do my thing. This whole city is full of people wanting to do my thing. Well, if your thing isn't God's things, you struck out. You can do your thing, but it leaves you empty. It does not fill. It does not satisfy. It does not give life. Now I ask you this. Is life worth living? Let's look at another verse in the Bible. 
Scripture says in the book of James, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Is life worth living? Yes. Life is worth living if you live your life for God. If you live your life for God. If you know Him. Then you can have real fun. You see, there's a lot of people that try to have fun. But God can give you peace. And there's a difference, isn't it? I mean, there's some people have fun trying to outrun the cops, you know, on their motorcycle, whipping around the streets. People out having fun. But there's a difference in peace. God will give you peace. It lasts. It stays. It will keep. Life is worth living with God. With Him and only with Him. He makes it free and full. Life is worth living when you know Jesus Christ. Did you know it would have been better that you had never been born than to live your life and miss Jesus? It would have been better that you had never been here. Because if you miss Him, you die. You die eternally. See, the Bible says something else about life. It said the end, life goes on. Do you know that? You can blow your brains out, but that didn't end your life. It's like the t-shirt they're going to give me. All you can do is transfer life. You don't take a life. You transfer it. You're either going to have eternal life with God or you'll have everlasting punishment. Life without God. But it goes on. So is life worth living now? Yes, because God gives you real life. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Life is worth living because somebody died for you. There was a man who gave his life on the cross that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You see, God saw man go astray. The Bible says, all ye like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every man to his own way. But the Lord hath laid upon him, Christ, the iniquity of us all. Is there anybody that's never sinned? If you've never sinned, would you fly around and let us watch your wings? All sinners will remain on their feet. All have sinned. Now, the Bible said something. The wages of sin is death. It brought physical death. It brings a spiritual death. To be without God is to be dead though you're alive. You live, but you're spiritually dead. And the Bible said that God gave of Himself. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have ever lasting life say that ever lasting life ever lasting life now how do we get life we get life through the death of Jesus Christ he laid down his life for you and for me now Jesus was nailed upon the cross his hands were nailed and as he cried out these words, it is finished. Then Jesus died and he paid for what you deserve and what I deserve. Jesus bore our sins for hundreds of years in the temple. And even before that, the shedding of blood of animals was given as an atonement to God. But then Jesus Christ came and gave his life. As an atonement for our sins. Now hear me carefully. I'm preaching slow so everybody that's stoned can hear me. Okay? Jesus died for you. He suffered your hell. He died for your sins. He suffered in your place. 
that if you will call on the name of Jesus Christ and desire to get out of that and give your life to Jesus, the moment you ask Him, Jesus, you died for me and you rose again, Jesus, save me. In that moment, God takes the blood of Jesus, which was shed for your sins, and His Holy Spirit brings it and washes your soul clean. And He writes your name in His book. And He says, you're mine. And the Spirit of the living God enters your body. And you come alive. You come alive. And God is living in you. And all, and all that the devil has destroyed is gone. And the power of sin is broken in your life. And the Spirit of God is loosed in your life. And now you're restored to the life that you should have had from the beginning. Jesus is in you. You've said, I've tried to change, Arthur. I've been to church. I've been baptized. I've been religious. I've given to charities. I've tried to be good. I'm not asking you to try anything. I'm asking you to call on the name of Jesus. And His Spirit will come in. And He will set you free from the inside out. 